quick tech tip, basic system curve calculations by the John Brooks company. All pumps have some kind of relationship between their ability to develop flow and the pressure or head that has to be overcome. This relationship, or better known as a pump curve, does not by itself tell us what the pump will actually do. In order to predict the pump's operating point, we must first know about the piping system the pump is connected to. Calculating the total pressure drop in a piping system at varying flow rates will give us a system resistance curve. Where this curve intersects the pump curve is where the pump should operate. This assumes the pump is in a like new condition, there is no air increment, and finally the pump is not suction cavitating. So now, let's break this system curve calculation down. We need to know only two values in order to develop the system curve. They are the static head and the frictional losses. Static head is easy to calculate. All you need is a tape measure or an accurate drawing of the system. The vertical distance from the source of the liquid to its highest point in the system is the static head. Be careful of piping systems that undulate. As siphons may develop, we will cover more about siphons in a later session. Now, calculating the frictional losses involves a full understanding of all the components within the system. For instance, all of the pipe length, diameter, and material type, also the type and number of valves and fittings, and finally, any other equipment like filters, heat exchangers, nozzles, need to be accounted for. All of these components have their own system resistance curves that can be found in reference data. Usually the best place to go for this information is the manufacturer or supplier. For instance, by referencing commonly available tables, we can find that a 100 foot long, 2 inch diameter steel pipe with 50 gallons a minute of water flowing through it has a frictional loss of about 2 psi. As we increase this flow rate, the losses will also increase. Similar relationships can also be found for the other components in the piping system. Now looking at the system as a whole, we can add the resistances together to get the total frictional losses. For instance, at a common flow rate, say 50 gallons a minute, sum each of the components frictional losses together, then add the static head and plot this on the pump curve, then repeat this process for other flow rates. If we connect all these points with a smooth line, we will have a system resistance curve. Now we can estimate what pump speed or impeller diameter we should use to achieve a particular flow and head. Now that we know the basics, we can start to analyze more complicated systems.